Go to Matthew chapter 17. And we're going to continue on in this series. Um, we started in spiritual fitness. And I want to encourage you that fitness is a process. It takes time and it takes commitment and it takes dedication. And it really, it, I really want to say commitment. I want to put a strong focus on commitment. And here's why. Because, you know, when you're, Setting out to do something God is calling you to do is very easy to get frustrated. Oh, my God. Especially when it doesn't move at the speed we think it should. And what I'm finding is the danger in, in my walk, and I'll say ours because I know we're very much in the same places, most of us, when we're walking with the Lord. We start to judge how far we've come by our own standards and not by God's standard. We start to put this negative microscope on ourselves and begin to deem ourselves unworthy or unaccomplished based on, I guess, the failures that we already perceive about ourselves. Do you bear witness to what I'm saying? We have a tendency to look at ourselves through the lens that we've created through our own experiences in life. And a lot of times those lenses are negative. And um, so we begin to conclude that the strength we have or don't have is based on what we can immediately see and not what God is saying. And as we went through the Gideon story um, a couple of weeks ago, and he referred to Gideon as his mighty man of valor, and Gideon said, what are you talking about? I'm hiding in the wine press. I'm not a mighty man of valor. And he's like, yeah, anyway, he didn't even respond to that. He said, go forward in this, your strength. Go forward in the strength that you have. And a lot of people spoke to me about that. And I've spoken to a lot of people about that even offline, like, you know, just not from church and to tell them the strength that you have is what God will commission you to go forward in no more, no less. He's never going to ask you to go forward in, in somebody else's strength or in a perceived strength. So I want you to take a second with me, just humor me and say, I already have the strength that I need. Say that. I already have the strength I need. Say it again. I already have the strength that I need. Um, the strength that you need is in him, which is in you. And I want to like clarify that separation right now. So you're listening to me? The strength that you have is in him. And what we do is we say, well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So basically saying I'm strengthless, he's strong, I'm weak, I get it, so I'm weak. But we have a tendency to focus on that I'm weak. And he's strong, but I'm weak. Yeah, we get that. But he in you makes you then not weak. Got it? You're not weak. Let's try this again. You are not weak because him in you is strength. So acknowledging your weakness and stopping there is, is, is fraud, it's counterfeit, because you, you are strong because the Almighty is in you and through you, therefore you are not weak. Acknowledging your weakness and stopping there is not, it's, it's just not fair, it's incomplete. Now that we're acknowledging our weakness, let's acknowledge his strength and then let's get more powerful about acknowledging his strength in me than the weakness part. Can we throw the weakness part out now that we've acknowledged that and acknowledge that he's in me and when I'm weak, it is then that he is strong because his, his strength is perfected in my weakness. So let's talk about this, ready? That means not only are you strong now, are you listening? You're perfectly strong. His strength is perfected in my weakness. So that means that I acknowledge my weakness, then there's a strength that comes on me that makes me strong in perfection. You're perfectly strong now. Say that, I am perfectly strong. Come on, say it with some conviction, like you really mean it. Like I can, I, even though you're muted, I can still hear you. I don't feel the energy. I am perfectly strong. That became very evident to me as God has been walking me through some things that, you know, trying to be strong for me and being, and, and being strong in me are two different things. Come on, I just gave you a diamond brownism right there. You need to lock into that. Trying to be strong in him 
and being strong because he's in me, it's a whole different world here. This, this power, this dunamis, this might that's flowing in me is his. So I become a vessel that he uses. You know, I watch, God, how do I share this? Because I want to share this right. I watch, I've seen shows and stuff on TV and everything, they try to bring some spirituality into it. You know, some kind of voice or some kind of power, some type of mystic this. And you watch the Marvel Universe and it's always this mystical power. Da, 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 da. And I noticed right away, and I'm not saying they're not feeding into the occult. I'm not going to get into that debate. My concern is how come the church sees the devil in all of it and don't see the God? Like, why, why can't it be God's power? Why, why, why can't, why do we have to see everything that, I'm, they may really be trying to bless the occult with what they're doing. But I want to see my Jesus and, and whatever power they're using, they ain't, whether they're perverting it or not, they, they, Satan ain't giving nobody power. He comes to steal, kill, steal, and destroy. So maybe they're taking the powers that God has given us as men and women and using it in a wrong way. But please stop believing that the devil's endowing people with power. He doesn't have it. So God's are saying to me, now, what if that person acknowledged me having that approach in my strength and my power? that speak to the mountain, that being able to move this and touch that and make, oh, he made a, he made a rock move. That must be satanic. His perfect strength and power is in me. So I need to stop believing for God to just only use me as a human. I'm gonna let you sit with that a minute. I need us to stop putting God in a position that he can only do, help me tie my shoes and go down the stairs and drive safely to my job and get my paycheck at the end of the week, hopefully, and come home. I, I need to grow to a place that I stop limiting God outside of the supernatural and only keeping him in the natural and then saying, glory to God, that's him. Who bears witness with me right here? My God is so big, we keep saying he's so big, but then we keep limiting him to just doing the mundane and every day. And anytime we see a powerful move anywhere, our first thought is, this must be demonic. I wanna find God in it. I don't say, God, yeah, I don't care what the enemy's trying to do. Where are you? Because that power belongs, listen to me, I'm, I'm staying on this for a minute because it's so strong in my heart. That power belongs to us. I don't care who's doing it, what they're doing with it and how they're using it. It belongs to the kingdom. I've seen a, a sad or a sorrowful thing in the earth. Princes walking like slaves and slaves riding horses like princes. This is what this, I'm talking about when it comes to this power. That power is ours. It's ours. And we letting them use it and then just calling it, oh, everything is the devil. And I'm like, God, help me to operate more powerfully. Okay, I want to let it go, but I'm just having trouble with it. So Moses threw down his stick and it became a snake. I ain't nobody in church doing that now. They'll call him a straight up devil. And then the devil people threw down their sticks and they became snakes. Like, see, we could do it too. Uh-huh. But my snake eats your snakes because my snake is more powerful than yours. So therefore, that power is still ours. God is said, ooh, Moses, you made a snake. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, snakes are the devil. What, what, Moses' stick turned into a snake? This is the kind of stuff that the church has been taught to do through satanic power, to renounce everything powerful and every move of God, anything that could be the move of God, and, and, and with our own mouths, give it to Satan. We've turned over all power, flow, move, might, super spirituality of the things of God, into the hands of the enemy and claimed it as his. The church did that, not the devil. Okay, okay, okay. I'll let it go. Matthew chapter 17. <laughs> but do you bear witness with what I'm saying today? 
That supernatural power belongs to us. That's ours. Let's stop assigning it to the enemy. It's ours. Stop and meditate on that a minute as you go to Matthew chapter 17. Just, just think about that a minute. We were in Matthew chapter 17 last week and we're going forward with it. We did all from chapter, from, from verse one all the way down to verse, I think, um, 14. And this is where we left off. I made some points last week and you took notes. I hope you had those notes. And if not, I'll go home again toward the end of, of the message of, or the series. But this is really, really powerful. They go to the mountain with Jesus, Peter and James and his brother John on the mountain and they see Jesus transfigured and they see Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus and they get wow, out, wow, wow. This is good, let's build a tabernacle, let's see. And Jesus, has to re- God has to speak from heaven, rebuke him and say, hey, hey, I don't care what you see, do it. He says, now this is why I'm bringing up this point that I started this message with today and listen to what I'm about to say. If you saw me standing there talking to anybody that you know is dead, you would say it's the devil, straight up, no questions asked. That's demonic, that's evil. I'm I'm, I'm just, come on. That's what the church has taught us, that's the devil. Yeah, there Jesus is doing it. <laughs> there he is. I'm not saying to go seeking that, and I'm not saying none of that. I'm just saying Jesus did it first. There it is. He's standing right there, and he's talking to the prophets of old. They're talking to him. The disciples see it. Let's look for God's power and stuff. Because if you look for the devil and everything, you're going to find him in everything. So they're standing there with Jesus. Jesus turns white like a cloud, but that's Jesus though. Okay, whatever. Listen, (laughs) Jesus is there talking to them. They want to now worship and make shrines to everybody. Now that's where it becomes demonic. That's where it becomes evil. That's where it becomes wrong. Now God shows you something supernatural. Now you want to build a shrine to the move of God or to the thing that God showed you. That's when it gets ugly. You understand what I'm saying? That's when it's not godly because God don't show you things for you to exhort those things. And God only bless you with things for you to, to exhort those blessings. And God didn't give you that new job for you to exhort and, and worship that boss. And God didn't give you that and have somebody bless you with that car so that you could go around talking about that person all the time instead of talking about what God is doing and how God is moving in your life. Somebody could say amen at least one time to that. God's in the blessing business and he's in the miracle business and he's in the powerful moves business and that stuff belongs to us. It's ours. And I keep making this point because I don't ever from this point on in my life want to go on attributing the works of God to Satan or the power of God to Satan or anything else to Satan that don't belong to him. If he's messing with it, I want to say that's God's. You stealing it and you ain't supposed to have it, but it's still God's. Bear witness with me. All right. If not, you may have to sit with it a minute because I had to sit with it and I got what I got and you have to get what you don't have to get. But nonetheless, the disciples saw this move. They said, wow, this is good. They didn't say, ooh, Jesus talking to dead people. They said, this is good. This is good that we are here. Let's build tabernacles. See, they, they crossed the line when they tried to take the attention off of what God was doing and be excited by a moment. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Don't be excited by moments and moves of God. Don't worship the creative thing over the creator. Just see what God is doing. Enjoy that. Marvel in it if you must. And say, God, well, what else you got? What else you doing? What else can you do? What else can I allow you to do? Because that stuff is big, saints. The the, the stuff God wants to do. Again, I, I reiterate, getting you to work safe and getting you a raise on your job and all that stuff. Can we get past that? Can we get past that? Would we all agree that our God is much bigger than that? We, would we, can we agree that our God is much more powerful than that? And I'm gonna tell you right now, if God blessed me tomorrow with a billion dollars, 
from the revelation I have now, I would still say, God, okay, that's money. That's an earthly thing. Where's those spiritual gifts? I want those things because those things are eternal. I want I, I, the blind eyes open and all these things. And let me walk on some water and stuff. And let me let me wind up in some foreign country that had no way of getting there, laying hands on somebody. And they say, this guy, he showed up in a yellow shirt. He just popped up and he, he was clearly American the way he spoke. And he laid hands on me. I was here. And then he just vanished into the light. I, let me, I want that stuff. Am I challenging you a little bit? I want that stuff. That's Bible stuff. I want that stuff. Well, God prospered me with a new this and a new that, but that's earthly. So my mind has changed. No, it's changed. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Seek ye first the kingdom and these things to be added. I don't want to seek this stuff. I don't want to seek the blessings on earthly blessings to then say I'm blessed. I want to see the moves of God through my life. I'm at that age now, and I don't really care that much about a bunch of stuff. I do want to see the power. I want to see the power. I've had people say to me, well, you know, God can take my bad situation. He can use it to his glory. Can we just give God some good stuff to use? Can we stop giving God our mess to work with? Can, can we? <laughs> okay. You know, he works with that. But come on. He wants to work with the power. All the power. The dunam is flowing through us. We walking down the street and our shadow healing people as we walk it to the job we still have, if that's what you want to believe for. Okay, so believe for your job and your raise, but also believe for that anointing that when you walk on your job, demons jump out of people and people get healed and COVID runs away down the street. And, 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 and instead of going to the White House and praying, we go there and then COVID leaves the whole nation because that's the power that we supposed to have. Those spirits are supposed to bow to us. And I get into these conversations with church people to, to vaccinate or not to vaccinate. I don't care if you vaccinate, stick the needle, you're behind wherever you want to stick it. I don't care. That's not the point. The point is we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be vessels of healing power. Where is that? Ah, 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 pray for me. <laughs> you know, because to me, I'm, I'm seeing the church get caught up into things that are not our business. I, ain't, I don't think you got less faith because you vaccinate or more faith because you do. I don't care. That, that doesn't matter. I, are you healing anybody that has it? Walk through the, go walk through the, 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 the ICU ward and just have people walking out behind you like the Pied Piper healed in Jesus' name. Th then let's have a conversation. I don't want to have this stupid conversation Democrat, Republican, who's right, who's this, who's in the economy, who's that. I don't care. I don't care about January 6th people. I don't care about none of that. This, this has a change in us. We keep limiting God to moment on earth. We're supernatural people. We're supposed to be. We are, we are, we are, we are mighty people, strong and powerful in him being used by him to change the world in his name. He went forward healing the people with signs following. He went over speaking his word with signs following. And the signs following, people were getting healed, people were getting delivered, sight was being restored. And then the disciples did it too. So you can't say it was just Jesus because then his disciples went out and they did what he did. It's the same thing. So I stayed on that real long. I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. But that's where my spirit was and I needed to share that. Um, but let's let's get into chapter 14. So we just just understand what just happened here first before I jump on. We need to understand this is a powerful day for these guys now. I don't want to just throw it away like it was nothing. They went out with Jesus like they normally do. They went to the mountain, right? They saw Jesus standing there speaking with prophets of old that had been passed away for who knows how long at this point, right? I'm thinking centuries. The, the fact that they knew who they were, listen to me close, is deep. They knew that Jesus was talking to Moses and Elijah. Newsflash, they didn't have iPhones back then. They have cameras, they have pictures, they didn't have video. How did they know that that was them? Only spiritual revelation could have revealed that. You follow? That they looked at, they could say, we supposed to see Jesus speaking to two old men. They saw Jesus and they knew who Jesus was speaking to. 
powerful. Number one. Number two. They saw this. They 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 got all excited and decided they wanted to make tabernacles. And then God spoke, and they heard God speak. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. So this is two powerful things in one day. Well, three. One, they walking around with Jesus, but I think they got normal. They got normal with that. Then they saw men from old speak, and they knew who they were speaking with him. Then they start to talk about let's make it just uh, tabernacle and stuff. And God, God now speaks to him. So. Jesus, now people resurrecting. Oh, but let's not forget Jesus turned clear and white and they could see through him and he shined like light. Let's take all of these spiritual things. This is a, this is a very, very spiritual day. Okay, if anybody on here has had one of those experiences, please fill me in, okay? Just one of them, not, not all three, just, just, <laughs> just one, right? And all of that, then God speaks, Jesus puts his hand on them, casts out the spirit of fear, and boom, they look up and there's nobody there but Jesus, the way it's supposed to be. That's why I left it last week. Only him, only Jesus. No, listen to him. And then he looked up again after Jesus cast out the spirit of fear, and boom, it's just Jesus. So here we are. They had a real, real freaky morning. And now they're going back. Don't tell nobody. They're going back with Jesus after having this miraculous God day. You ready? Miraculous God day. This is a miraculous God day. I would love just to have one of those. Jesus, just stand in front of me and, and appear like light and shine and all that. Just, just do, do I mean, you don't have to bring Moses and Elijah. Just come yourself and do that. I would, I would love to have that. Just let your head pop up in my room and do that. See, and even with that, let me. <laughs> and you will stop rebuking devils or probably being afraid and thinking it's a, a demon. You, you follow what I'm saying? Because that's how we've been trained. We are scared of the things of God. We are afraid of the power of God. We are afraid of the move of God. They heard the, the voice of God. And they fell on the ground, scared and shaking and trembling. Why? That's daddy. You shouldn't have been freaking out about that because they had got so into religion. They didn't know daddy's voice. Oh, you want to have this conversation. I know the Bible, I know the scripture, I know the Pentateuch, I know the Torah. Yeah, but, but when God spoke, you freaked out. But you didn't freak out when you saw two dead men. You got too caught up in some stuff. Yeah, you don't even know daddy's voice. I don't want to hear daddy's voice and be afraid and fall to the ground. I don't want the Lord to appear before me and I faint and pass out. You know, he has to resurrect me and tell me, fear not my child. Why should I be in a place that when my daddy speaks to me, that I don't know his voice, that I have to respond like that? Speaking the supernatural here, I'm talking about. So watch this. They're coming back after all of this. I know I want to get through way more than this by now, but I... I you guys are okay with where I am, right? You're good? Coming back, verse 14, and when they approached the multitude, when they approached the multitude, so now they're coming back to the crowd, they had their moment. A man came to him kneeling before him saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, he, for he has epilepsy and is moonstruck. I don't know what the heck that means, uh, other than he is dear, um, possessed, and he suffers terribly. For frequently he falls into the fire and many times into the water. Now, I try to look up and see if that was literal. Are they saying this guy, this kid really was going around falling in fire? I, I don't know. And, and I brought him to his disciples and they were not able to cure him. And Jesus answered, oh, you unbelieving, warped, rebellious, Unbelieving, warped, wayward, and rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation. That's why I'm reading out the Amplified. How long am I to remain with you? How long am I to bear you? Bring him here to me. I'm putting it down right now. Listen to me. Why would Jesus be so upset? about the fact that he said, I brought him to your disciples and they could not do it. 
Well, the same situation we just had up here at the mountain. You're up here at the mountain with Jesus and you see Jesus transfigured and you see God speaking, you scared and everything I started this message saying. You are so unattached to God, so been so taught to not know his power and his gifts that Jesus was irritated and frustrated and called him all kinds of names. Because at this point, his frustration had to be, but you guys should know this by now. Stay with me. Why would he be frustrated with them if he knew that they weren't going to be able to do it? He felt, you guys by now, walking with me and everything, you should know this stuff. What do you mean you couldn't cast them out? Why, why, they bring, why is this man bringing the child and he's saying you couldn't do it? I just took two of them and went up into the mountain. All the rest of you are down here and all your disciples left. Y'all couldn't do anything? None of y'all? I took them to your disciples and they couldn't do anything. So what's Jesus' frustration? So basically you're only powerful when I'm around or pretend to be. You're only powerful in worshiping and strong in the spirit and worshiping praise and on Sunday morning or Wednesday night service or Friday night Bible study when everybody's in the room. That's the only time you can sing and shout and dance and be all powerful. Well, I felt his presence. Ooh, I just confessed. I felt Jesus. Ah, you start crying. I felt Jesus. Presence all over me. And then you go outside the church and you're worthless. You can't do nothing for nobody. So all you're good for is feeling and crying to worship music. Church. Wake up, wake up. We're more powerful than that. Jesus is upset because they couldn't do it. And he calls them names as a result of this. And the names he calls them are very specific and for a reason. I brought them to your disciples and they were unable to cure him. And Jesus said, you unbelieving, warped, wayward and rebellious and thoroughly perverse generation. He is upset, but he mentioned that you're rebellious, you're warped, twisted, you're wayward, that means you, 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 you drifted away or backslid in, and you're thoroughly perverse. Let's talk about this. I talked about it last week, talk about it again. They're up in the mountain, they see Jesus, they see Two prophets of old talking to Jesus, and their first reaction was, let's build something. Let's create some kind of form of something that we can worship other than just, let's just worship Jesus. <laughs> We're right here, right now. He's right there in front of us with these, right here. Like, let, no, 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 let's make something physical and related to that. I need you to understand this. At this point, they were under the Roman rule and under the Roman government. And the Roman government was very into gods and idols and statues and worshiping of men and all of these things that Jesus was saying to them, you guys, the, the, my disciples, the, God's people, Israel, are twisted and warped like this. You're, you're rebellious. He called them rebellious. You're rebellious. That's why you can't do it. You're, 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 you're twisted, you're warped. Listen to me, saints. We've been warped, we've been twisted, we've been rebellious. All of those lines apply to us. That's why we can't do it. You know, let's not just look at him, Jesus, Jesus saying to the disciples, we're the disciples now. I'm reading those words to you. That's why we can't lay hands on the sick and see them recover. That's why we can't do the miracles that Jesus charged us to do. Because we're twisted, we're warped, we're rebellious, we're set on our own mind, our own way, and our own way right of doing things. We're looking out for us. That's why that power is not flowing through us right now. He just explained it. I, I'm sorry. I wish I could give you better news than that, but this is the facts of the matter. The reason we can't do it is for the reasons he just described. Because we're twisted and warped and we're rebellious. Because we got caught up in the way men do things. We got caught up in the way church do, does things. And we don't even know anymore how Jesus did things. We're the disciples. I know you ain't jumping around shouting hallelujah right now, but it's all good. It's still the truth and the truth will make you free. So there you have it. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm not trying to be the postman that everybody likes. I'm trying to be the postman that delivers the mail correctly. There you have it. That's my job. So Jesus is upset with them. 
because they're not able to function in the power that he came to expose to them because they're caught up in tradition. They've allowed tradition to rob them of power. There's one point where Paul said, you men of your traditions have made the word of God of no effect. The traditions of church, the traditions of man steal power from you. So I deal with people who come to me and I, and even myself, God has really been dealing with me this past week about past and forgiveness and about people who've hurt me and about how I feel about those people. And I've been trying to forgive. I really just, just really got to keep bringing up thoughts and things they said. And I feel all the venom coming up. And then I start having a conversation with what I should have said and what I'll say next time I see them. You come on, you, you know, you start, we start rehearsing, you know, the, the whole scenario of something long gone. These people might not even be alive anymore, but still here we are having a whole scene and argument with them and going through this whole stupid. And I'm getting frustrated with myself because I take authority over it and then God will sneak up and bring it up on me again. Oh, remember when they said it to you? Oh, mm, okay. And, and, and right away, I find myself back in this, this conversation with this person that no longer exists in my life or might not even be here on the planet anymore. It's sad, but it's true, right? And finally, I said, God, he said, say it, say it. I don't want to say it as a negative confession. Say it. God, I can't forgive. Apart from you, I can't do this. I'm trying to behave right now. And he said, yeah, exactly. That's what it is. You're not allowing me to cleanse you. You're trying to behave. You're not allowing me to make you free. You're trying to behave. That's how your whole Christian walk is. Trying to be right. Trying to do right trying to say right, trying to impress the other believers so they don't think you're a bad Christian and tell you, you, you know, you need people to tell you you're a good Christian. Like, why do you care? Why does it even matter what people think? I need you to do what I'm telling you to do. And what I'm telling you to do is I'm the son here you need. Like, you can't do it. You can't behave. You can't be good. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. God, I, I feel bad about people. And more important, I feel bad about myself. I, I feel unworthy of your power. I feel like these truths that you've put in this word can't be mine because I have so many mountains to climb before I'm worthy. And he says, says who? Says who? Who, who, who gave you this? Who's bewitched you, foolish Galatians, that you feel again that you need to turn to old things, touch not, taste not, handle not? Who gave you this mess, right? Is, is it not evil from its root? Is it not demonic from its source? Anything that seeks to exalt, thought that seeks to exalt itself above the knowledge of God, have I not tell you to bind it up and lead it away captive? This is your destiny. Stop trying to fix outward stuff and leaving your inward stuff a mess. Stop trying to pretend and speak Christianese, but not allow me to free you from the spiritual diseases that keep you bound. So I had to look at hurt. And here's the deep thing about people who've hurt me and you. We will focus on trying to be free from feeling the impact of what they said and not be free from the spirit in us that makes us feel that way about what they said. Right, God, if I'm free, it doesn't matter what they said, I'm free. It doesn't matter what they did, I'm free. It's not about me trying to feel something, it's about me acknowledging that you've come to make me free and I'm free and they can have said what they want to say and do what they want to do and say it 50 more times, I'm free. I'm trying to fix it on the outside instead of letting you cleanse me on the inside. I'm trying to feel something emotionally instead of letting you deliver me spiritually. This is foolishness. It's foolishness. We keep limiting God to our abilities. I shared last week, or week before, when he said to Gideon, go in this your strength, not in the strength that's in you, the strength that's available to you, through him, 
Don't go in your strength. Go in the strength, this, your strength that's available to you. Him in you, Christ in you, God in you. That means if you in me, I need to let you clean out everything else in me and not be ashamed to even let you see it because you see it anyway. He sees it anyway, babies. He sees it. <clears throat> so Jesus looks at them and he says, how long do I have to put up with this mess with you guys? You're unbelieving, warped, wayward, and rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation. How long am I to remain with you? How long do I have to put up with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. Well, and the, and the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not drive him out? And he said, because of the littleness or the lack of faith. That is, you lack of firmly relying trust because your lack of faith. Now, I'm going to read the rest of this. For I say to you, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to the mountain, move to yonder place and it will move and nothing will, and nothing and nothing and nothing and nothing will be impossible to you and nothing will be impossible to you and nothing will be impossible to you. And, and not watch this. But this time only except goes out by prayer and fasting and that's an italicis and I'm gonna stop right there, prayer and fasting. And so here's what the church did with that whole message. They perverted it, they limited it, and they tore it down to something little and worked and perverse, just like Jesus said. Jesus, they said Jesus, Jesus, after he done told them off and called them all kinds of names, they said, why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, what? Because your lack of faith. But his first complaint about them was, oh, you faithless, generation. You faithless warp generation. Here's what the church has done. Demonic. No different than them saying, let's build three tabernacles and worship you. But see, you can only cast some kind of demons out through prayer and fasting. And they've taken the whole thing and made it about the man's earthly effort and not the power of God that he, Jesus talked about. He didn't say because you didn't pray and fast. He said because you lack faith. Your faith is the issue. You're faithless. That's why you couldn't do it. And then he said, however, this kind of faith comes through prayer and fasting, not demon go out to prayer and fasting, but they changed it to, well, well when, I didn't see Jesus praying fast just then when they brought the boy to him. Jesus said, oh, bring him back to me tomorrow. I need to pray and fast before I could cast this one out. <laughs> he didn't say that. He did it right there on the spot. Boom. And, and, and you see that this time you have fanfare and the demon spoke and Jesus said, who are you? And this time was none of that. Get out. Demon left. Done. Gone. How come we didn't do it? Because what he was saying was this kind goes out by prayer and fasting, not this kind of demon, this kind of faith. This kind of faith goes out through prayer and fasting. Hear me out. Stop giving credit to demons or the dog on time. He's saying this type of faith goes out by prayer and fasting. That's what he's talking about. Why couldn't we cast out the demon? Because you don't have faith. When they brought the kids to him, said your disciples couldn't cast out. I said, because you are a faithless, perverse generation. So it's the whole issue is the faith, not the demon, and not the fasting and, and, and not eating. That don't make demons. Demons are not afraid because you're hungry. Trust me. Demons go out by faith. He said, you faithless generation, you lack a conviction of what you're doing. You can cast the demon out because you were speaking the words, but you had no conviction of what you were saying. You had no belief in what you were even bringing forward. You came forward said in this, saying, well, let's say what Jesus said. Let's do what Jesus do. But you had no conviction or belief to it whatsoever, and that's why it didn't work. You laid hands on your sick child and your child didn't get well because you had no commitment, co conviction or commitment to what you were doing. You were praying and hoping it worked. I'm not getting on you, I'm getting on me too. This is what God is showing me. Where is the power? Where is the dunamis from on high? Where is that might that comes down that when you speak the word of God, the, 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 the mountains open up and the Red Sea pots and all these phenomenal things that I've always done on behalf of my people. Where is that today? Well, it doesn't exist because you're trying to 
pray and fast more so you can move a demon instead of so that you can concentrate yourself. Because that's what he's talking about. This kind of faith the only goes out. He doesn't need by praying, fasting, not eating and turning on your plate. He's talking about by consecrating yourself before God so that you hear God and God can speak to you. That's what he means. Separating yourself from yourself so that you can hear God and God can hear you and, you're can, and you can do it. I only do what I see the father do it. I only say what I hear the father say. This is what Jesus is saying. He's saying this kind of power only goes out if you're concentrated. If you're separated, if you spent enough time before God, before these moments appear, so that when these moments appear, you know exactly what to do. This goes to the train. That's what it means. How do you lose this weight, Pastor? How did you get all this weight off? That kind only went out through prayer and fasting, right? That I had to get instruction. I had to get direction. I had to follow it. I had to discipline myself to the point that I can understand even my body, don't eat that. You don't need that right now. Oh, you can have that cake, cupcake today. Go ahead and eat it. Can I have another one? Half. Take the cream off the top. I hear the, the Holy Spirit speak to me and tell me stuff like that. Yeah, don't starve yourself, but don't, don't overdo it. You know the difference. Um, yeah, I really want to eat that. That means you need some food. Go get some food then. Don't eat the junk. Don't eat the carb. Don't eat the first thing right next to you. Go, why don't you? Oh, yeah, sometimes I'm just hungry. I just open the refrigerator and I just grab a, you know, just grab me a piece of cake. Well, why don't you cook enough food then to have in your refrigerator so whenever you get hungry, you can just go snatch your refrigerator open and eat something healthy instead of grabbing the first thing that's in front of you because you had waited to starve and now you're ready to eat some garbage. I, I'm just, I ain't talking to you. Y'all can do what you want. I'm just telling you how God deals with me. This kind goes out by concentration, dedication, commitment. I'm talking about spiritual fitness. This type goes out by having a consistent diet of God. It's a consistent diet of his power. It's a consistent diet of his word. It's a consistent, and I ain't talking about read a lot more of the scripture and spend more time reading the word. Listen, I'm going to tell you, church people get upset with me saying that. That ain't going to help you. If you ain't even worrying how to work the words you already have, this is, you know, so you're just going to have a bunch of head knowledge of scripture. That ain't going to do a dog or thing for you. No one, listen, I know all about diet, diet programs, fitness programs, and everything, and I'm still fat, 300 pounds. So there you have it. And I know all about it. I know all about it. I can tell you what the best things to eat, the best times to eat a day, what a carb was, what a, what a complex carb was, what a simple carb was, what a high sugar was. I knew all that and still was 300 pounds. So no one in the scripture ain't going to do a dog or thing for you. You got to practice it. You got to concentrate. Concentrate. This kind goes out by concentration. Practice. Well, I don't have that much faith. Well, then stop praying for little things and standing and sit before God until you see that manifest. And then go to the next thing and practice that until you see that manifest. And then and stop trying to pray for 50,000 things. Pick one thing and lock yourself into it and stay with that until you get that clear and you figure out how to reach God for other things. But can we just stop being regular people and name in the name of Christ? That, that's what I want. You don't have to do this with me. I'm just telling you where I am. Watch me smoke, because I'm doing it. And I'm going to do it, and I'm going to keep doing it. In every area of my life, everything I'm putting my hand to is prosperous. I ain't talking about money prosperous. Yes, that's working too, but I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about prosperous. I want to be prosperous in my peace. I want to be prosperous in my soul. I want to be prosperous in my heart. I want to be prosperous in my health. I want to be prosperous in my thoughts. I want to prosper in my prayer time. I want to be prosperous in my time before God. I want to be prosperous in my fellowship with God. I want to be prosperous in my fellowship with everybody else God tells me to fellowship with. That's why I'm supposed to everything I put my hand to. If I walk up to a stranger and put my hand to them, they should prosper. That's the way it goes. We have to stop being ordinary. Jesus just turned and said, get out. And they were like, Lord, can you tell us, you know, why, why we couldn't do that? And you want to know what's funny? <laughs> I laugh at this, but God has been showing me this about myself and about people. He said, you notice they waited till they got me alone. Why didn't they ask me that in front of everybody? Because they were too embarrassed. They were too caught up in themselves. They, was too caught they should have asked that question in front of everybody so everybody could have got that answer and everybody could be fed. 
But Christian people don't want people to know that they're not really walking the way they should be walking and standing the way they should be standing. They're more concerned about the way people see them than the way God sees them. So they, he, they, that's a good question that you could have put out for everybody. Everybody could have learned from that lesson. Jesus loved teaching people. They could have just put that out there. But no, they went until they got alone because they didn't want to acknowledge and probably wasn't all and probably just, who, well, who's going to go ask them? I don't know. You're going to ask them now? Well, you, Peter, you always ask questions. Why don't you go ask? You know, you know they don't want to get out there and make themselves look like they didn't know. They was probably standing there while Jesus was praying. So like, that's a confirmation right there. Mm -hmm. That's a confirmation. Confirmation of nothing. You know, just, I, you know, I, you know, I knew, I, I, I knew that. I knew that in my heart. I knew that. I, I just wanted, I, I thank, you, thank you, Jesus, for saying that. Because you know what? That was a confirmation. Praise God. Church folk are just irritating. That's why Jesus said, why well, long have to put up with you? you you're just, just twisted, perverse, fake, phony behind people, powerless, doing nothing really major at all, just going to church. That's it. And then you still walk around naming my name. Good for you, but still all the power that belonged to you, you ain't even barely touching it. So saints, I hope you enjoyed the message today. <laughs> I know it was a little bit of a spank a spank, but come on. We're powerful people. Can we stop playing church? Can we? Oh, man. And it's not hard at all. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Don't even approach it like, oh, I heard everything pastor said. Whew. I know I'm twisting and perversing. Oh, I just I just have to get before the Lord and just get free from all of these spirits. Come, can we not do that? Just say, Lord, I receive it. It's mine. The word says it's mine. I accept it as mine. No longer am I unbelieving. No longer am I perverted or twisted. No more no longer am I a person who lacks faith. I choose right now in this day to accept the promises of God. I choose to believe that all of his promises are yea and amen. I choose to believe that those mighty things you're gonna to do to me, you could do to me and God just told me to stop and just say to you, and babies don't think now I'm just gonna go out tomorrow now and I'm gonna go and heal all of the disease. And you know, I mean, if he tells you to, then yes, you're gonna do it. But just start with something. I've said this to you before. Just, let's just start with something. Yeah, I'm going for the big go. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm diving all in because I want to always be that example. And I ain't letting you catch me. It's my goal is like, till I die, you're going to be having to chase me the way I'm walking. Follow me as I follow Christ. I got to stay ahead. It, it is what it is. So pastor's going gangster. I'm going gangster with this. He's restored my youth like the eagle. I think he's dropped at least about... 10, 20 years off my, my life and my health. You know, it, this is, this is, this is that time. This is that time. This is my time. This is the time. And God had me start confessing three years or two and a half years ago. It's my time. This is my time. Start speaking that. Start speaking it, saints. And then let God clarify what that is. And then take a step at a time. You ain't got to get it all tomorrow. But baby, start. Start claiming spiritual greatness, spiritual gifts the flow of God in your life, every area and everything you touch and your needs being met. I want us to get to the place that you don't pray about that anymore. My God, can we leave the earthly crap behind? Like th that's so small. He said, look at the birds of the air. They don't talk, they talk not now, they spend yet your father feeds them. Can we get to the place? I'm at that place. I can tell you that right now. My father feed me. I don't toil, neither do I spend. And my father keep feeding me. My, my, he feeds me and he still feeds Angela and, and my kids now that's living there. I, I lack nothing. I support four places right now. And I don't get up at no time in the morning. I get up whenever I want to get up and I go to bed when I feel like going to bed. My God feeds me as long as I'm doing his work. And he's made it very, very clear. Son, don't you worry about it. I will introduce you to stuff. I will show you the stuff. When we got that thing with the building, you'll know the story. We got that violation because we had a salon in there and, and we never really registered the building as a church. And they gave us that thing, came over to 15000 close to $20,000. And just like that, we get a call from the, the, the TV show, want to rent our space. And that winds up being seven grand knocked right out the park. And the rest of it, he's still taking care of it. One step at it, every time it comes up, the money is there. So I'm telling you right now, I know money is a small thing. I want us to get past the money part. 
And you get there by getting to this part, to the spiritual part where you walk away with God and God's walking with you and you're hearing his voice and you're obeying his voice and you're not twisted and you're not warping, you're not wayward and you're not perverted and you're all right there. And when you're there, God says, okay. And I'm going to leave you with this. This is stuff I used to say after the message, but I'm going to say it right now. He's going to start showing you your crap. And he's going to say, this thing I told you to deal with, I need you to deal with that right now. Yeah, but it hurts. And I don't want to go, okay, then stay where you are for another year or two. Go around that mountain one more time. Just walk around it one more time. Walk, just walk around it one more time. I'm telling you right now, you need to let this go. You need to forgive that. You need to release this. You need to stop depending on this person. You need, to, you need to let go of something that may be in your life 20, 30, 40 years. It doesn't matter. God is going to say to you in this season, you're not going any higher with these weights on your balloon. You're not. You're not. You can pray and fast all you want. You can do what you want, but you're going to have to follow the instruction. I had to learn how to eat. I had to learn. I had to learn. And let me tell you this. I gave myself five months. I asked the guy, how long did it take you to do that? He said, it took me five months. I said, for five months, I'm locked in. I'm not moving. Commit to it. Don't try it, babies. And then when you get set back or pushed back, the enemy going to try to keep you in that place. Trust me, he ain't going to just lay down his cards and walk away from the table. He's going to keep dealing. He's going to keep dealing. And you're going to have to say, I'm committed to see the other side of this. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Say it. I'm committed to see the other side. I'm committed to see it. I, I, I refuse to go without it. I will not let you pass until you bless me. I had to make a commitment. God, I'm coming out the other side. I'm coming out the other side. It's mine to have. And I'm not going to renounce it. So if it was five months. I gave myself the five months. That five months was that meant something. And that five months... I, even the temptations to slide to the left or to the right wasn't a question for me. I gave myself that five months and I stuck to it and it gave me and motivated me. It's like when I was like, yeah, you only got five more months. You only got two more months. Oh, you only got one more month. And I'm telling you right now, take the step with Jesus. Take the step with God. Start going forward with something. Ask him to give you the step in the direction. Say, God, I'm willing to commit to this wholeheartedly for the next three months that I'm not going to move from where I'm standing in whatever this is you called me to. I'm going to learn what I need to learn. I'm going to spiritually diet the way I need to spiritually diet. I'm going to fast certain stuff and certain conversations and certain TV shows and certain movies and certain whatever, and certain songs and even a lot of church songs you need to fast yourself from and, and, and just say, in this season, Father, I'm just going to be before you for this next two, three months, whatever it is. I don't care if it's one month. I'm going to sit before you and I'm going to know your voice and the voice of a stranger, and the voice of my flesh, and the voice of my mind, and the voice of confusion. I shall not follow. The devil, nobody else. I'm going to sit here with you until I hear you just a little bit clearer, and then we're going to take it to the next level. Father, bless your people. Bless your people. Bless your people. Bless their minds, bless their hearts, bless their spirits. Encourage them. Encourage them. Make them strong in you. We don't give up. We don't faint. We are who we are in you. And we have this. We have this. We have this. It's ours. We have it. 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 It's ours. It's ours. You gave it to us. It's ours to have. We have. We're not trying to get it. We have it. It's ours. Your Holy Spirit lives in us. It's ours. We're no longer weak. We were weak, but then you came and made us strong, and your strength has made us perfect, and that strength has made us right. So we were weak, but we're not weak now. We're strong. We can do all things through Christ right now, not someday, not in the years to come, but right now we can do all things. We can do all things today. We can do all things right now. We can do all things right now. We can do all things right now. In Jesus name. Love you, saints.